So wonderful. So um, welcome everybody. Um, we are doing a virtual career Tuesday. Today is February 15th and we are thrilled to have Pitney Bowes join us today. Um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. We are, we have a bit of a panel from Pitney Bowes. So we are blessed, including their CFO, who is a UConn alumni. So we'll let him introduce himself as well. So do you want to kick it off, Nicole, and introduce your panel and talk about what Pitney Bowes is? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Judy. And thank you, UConn, for um, giving us the the opportunity to be here. Uh, my name is Nicole Clemens. I manage the campus partnerships at Pitney Bowes. Um, so thank you so much for joining us today as we discuss our financial leadership program and give you some insight into our company and our culture. Um, I'm happy to see a few of you on camera. I'd love to see more if possible and encourage you to make the session interactive. If you have a question, just raise your little hand electronically or you can type the question in the chat and either Judy or myself will We'll make sure that we get that question answered today. Um, what I'd like to do is introduce you first to Eileen Bednarz. Eileen is our senior talent advisor, and she'll be working with students throughout the application process from beginning to end. Um, Eileen's going to kick off our presentation today by giving you some background about herself and just some goals of today's session and what we're looking to get out of it. So thank you again for joining, and I'll hand it over to you, Eileen. All right. Thanks, Nicole. All right, so um, my name is Eileen Bednarz, and uh, like Nicole said, I represent Talent Acquisition. I've been with Pitney Bowes now for almost eight years. I uh, can honestly say it's by far the best company that I've ever worked for, for many, many reasons. Um, Pitney Bowes, we're known for an extremely positive culture. We're also known for work-life balance. We are known for internal mobility growth and we're known for competitive benefits. So when you put all of that together, it's kind of our secret sauce, if you will. Um, our average tenure at Pitney Bowes is 12 years, but quite honestly, we have people 20 years, 30 years, 40 plus years. For me, from a talent acquisition standpoint, that speaks volumes, right? That our employees are happy, they feel challenged, um, they love the workplace and they're not bored. There's that internal mobility growth there. So we are excited to be here. Um, and obviously, like Nicole said, um, Vin is a UConn grad. So we're really rooting for UConn today. Um, we just ask that you hold all your questions until the end, unless you want to, you know, you feel free to put it in chat. We'll make it as interactive as possible. And like Nicole said, if you want to um, obviously um, put yourself on camera. That would be great, especially when you ask a question. So, um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about Pitney Bowes um, and obviously um, the four business units, right? So the the four major areas of Pitney Bowes. So Pitney Bowes is broken up into these four uh, following silos, if you will. So the first one is called Centex uh, Solutions, otherwise known as STS. Um, that is our core, uh, I shouldn't say core, our legacy business, right? That's what the company was founded on. That's what most people know us best for. A little history lesson. In 1920, Mr. Pitney and Mr. Bose, hence our name, Pitney Bose, invented the very first postage machine, which actually is now located in the Smithsonian uh, to this day. Obviously, um, our technology has changed drastically over the last 102 years. Most of our machines are cloud-based now. And um, I've got to put on my, my glasses because I know the number changes, but we have over 100,000 SendPro installations currently to date. So that's the first division. The second division is known as pre-sort services. Pre-sort services partners with the United States Postal Service and helping sorting and delivering their overflow of flat mail, first class mail, mainly envelopes, bubble bags. We have over 40 hubs spread out all over nationwide in North America. And we process over, got to look at the numbers, sorry, 17 billion pieces of mail on, a, on an annual basis. The third division is known obviously as global e-commerce. That is the newest part of Pitney Bowes. In 2017, 
we had acquired a company called Nugistics. Since then, in five short years, we've had double digit revenue growth year after year after year to the point where this division alone is now responsible for over one half of the overall revenue for the entire organization. That is pretty impressive in five short years. What this division does is we work with major retailers like Victoria's Secret, L.L. Bean, Fossil, Neiman Marcus, Macy's, Bed Bath & Beyond, just to name a few. And we handle all of their customers' fulfillment, delivery, and returns of parcels and packages from point A to point B, which is your doorstep. And we're very excited about that. And then the last division is known as global financial services or financial services. Now this division pretty much is a common thread through all the other three divisions. A lot of people don't realize that Pitney Bowes, we've had our very own industrial bank located in Salt Lake City, Utah for over 30 years. It's called the PB Bank. The main purpose of the bank 30 years ago in its inception was to provide our customers the opportunity to lease or finance our equipment if they couldn't afford to purchase it outright. But most recently, because we've expanded and we've had acquisitions along the way, we've also expanded on our portfolio of lending products to date over the last three years to also include small business loans now, term loans, supply chain financing to cover inventory and receivables, we also have a separate division or arm uh, umbrella under the bank called Wheeler Financial Services, which focuses on capital equipment financing. That could be anything from a fleet of vocational trucks uh, to manufacturing equipment in a warehouse, medical device equipment, construction equipment. So a lot more that meets the eye. All right, so at this point, I am going to turn it over to my counterpart, uh, Vin Gandhi, who's going to explain to you the Pitney Bowes Financial Leadership Program. So, Vin, take it away. Thanks, Eileen, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, I'm incredibly excited to be here. As you heard a couple of times, uh, I graduated from Stores about 17 years ago, and um, it just it seems like yesterday to me that I was sitting in your seats attending info sessions for for full time career opportunities. So. Um, Nevertheless, I'm incredibly excited to be here to share this opportunity with you. Um, and, and I'm not alone. Um, Lauren Thomas, who leads our technical accounting team, is also on the call, and she's going to be the program manager for this. So you've got two UConn alumni running things here. Um, so I, I hope you understand you're in really good hands. <laughs> uh, before we get into the program details, I just want to start with a little bit of background on, on how we got here, how we got to this point. Um, as Eileen mentioned, Pitney Bowes is going to turn 102 this year. A century is an incredibly long time for any single firm to be in operation, right? Just imagine what occurs over 100 years and for any single company or corporation to have products and services that still resonate after that time, it's an incredible feat. In, um, in 1920, our founders invented the first ascending and descending postage meter. It was a small tabletop device where you can load up funds and then draw them down as you use postage. It was a, a enormous success at that time. And we installed these devices all over the world, millions of these devices all over the world. And we enjoyed a near monopoly for decades. We had market dominance then and we continue to have market dominance. The one thing that you can expect though, after being in operation for a hundred years is that you're going to face disruption. Right? With um, digital and technological advancements, um, the need for mail, first class letter mail, declined. And therefore, the need for these devices started to decline. So while we still enjoy market dominance, the size of our market has, has continued to shrink in that specific, for that specific product. So our leadership team had the foresight to anticipate this and acknowledge that this is going to happen and made the strategic decision that we need to transform. If we're gonna be successful, if we're gonna be relevant, if we're gonna be in operation for another 100 years, we better transform what we're doing and transform every aspect of our business. So there's three primary areas where we've tackled this, this transformation. 
um, or this massive change, if you will. The first one is products and services. Do we have products that clients want? Is there a demand for them? And is that demand growing? Right? You may want something today, but if you don't want it tomorrow, it's not a sustainable model. So do we have products and services that resonate with the marketplace and are in a growth area? So there's two, there's two primary um, factors there. The Centec business that Eileen mentioned, that was our legacy business, our core business. They're the ones who installed these tabletop postage meters. We converted those postage meters by investing in technology, investing in innovation, convert all of those from just processing and, and, and um, swiping mail letters, letter mail through them, to sending devices. Now they're tabletop devices with multi-carrier solutions where you can, if you need to send mail, you can, or you can send a parcel. You can weigh a small to medium sized parcel, print out a shipping label immediately from any type of carrier and send it. And in this environment where a lot of small businesses were forced to you know, leave their real estate footprint and work out of their home, move their operations at home, our equipment has never resonated more with the marketplace. The next area is global e-commerce. You take a hundred years of, of core competencies gained from operating the mailing business, enabling our clients to communicate and connect with their clients um, through small tabletop devices. It's, it's just the expertise that we've gained in, in sending capabilities is immeasurable. The other side of the business, pre-sort services. I'm the CFO of pre-sort services, the pre-sort services business. A network of 40 operating centers domestically where we sort and process over 67 million pieces of mail per day. And we do it efficiently. And predominantly with same day or next day delivery. So high volume dispersed across the nation. Fairly strict SLAs and delivery times that we need to comply with. And we do it well. You combine the two of those, the sending capabilities, the ability to manage a logistics network efficiently, that leads naturally into global e-commerce, the parcel market. The parcel market has grown double digits annually. The pandemic only helped to bolster that, right? The, the amount of shipping and purchasing through e-commerce channels has grown exponentially. And we've got brand permission to do it. We've got 100 years of credibility built up. You know, when you hear Pitney Bowes, when our clients hear Pitney Bowes, they hear reliability. So we've got brand permission to operate in that space now. And, and by doing those two things, by converting all of our mailing devices to sending devices, by entering the global e-commerce market and win that marketplace, it's, it's changed our trajectory. For the last five years, we've grown revenue consecutively. So that's the first step. You, gotta, you have to move into a growth industry. You've got to transform your products and services. The second is in your systems. A few years ago, we made a significant investment, hundreds of millions of dollars to install and implement a single, a single system, a single source of record. As you can imagine, over 100 years and over several, you know, dozens of acquisitions, we acquired a lot of different systems, a lot of disparate systems that we just kind of patched together. At one point, at one point in time, we had 35 different billing systems. I mean, it, it's it's just silly, you know, from a client perspective, we are Pitney Bowes. We're not Presort, Global E-Commerce, GFS, or Centec, or anything else. We're, we're a single company. So we shouldn't have different invoices with different letterheads and different formats coming from different systems with different schedules. So in order to compete, to be more nimble with our new products and services and these new marketplaces of new competition, we needed a better system. So we invested in a single system to improve the client experience and be able to change and, and be more flexible in a dynamic environment. And the third area investment, which is likely the most important, is talent. Right? Finance is an enabling function. As a finance team, you know, as a finance leader, my job is to enable the operators to achieve their objectives, to help the business, give them insights on what's coming and what's happened, what's occurred. And that takes us to this program. You can go to the next slide. 
So effectively, we're launching a leadership rotational program, an accelerated path for you to come from undergrad, a natural transition where right now you're in a, a, an academic environment where you're learning a lot through textbooks and theory, right? Company XYZ and, and product ABC. So the best transition is to go into a program where, where you're going to get exposure to different areas of finance. So how's this going to work? Over a two-year period, you're going to have four rotations, four six-month rotations that are going to give you exposure to four different areas of finance and four different parts of our business. And every six months, you'll rotate into a new one until you complete the program. In addition to your day-to-day -day deliverables, and, and what I'll say is this is a training program, but this is very much a full-time position. So in addition to your day-to-day -day deliverables for that specific rotational job, we're going to complement that with more training. Fundamentals of, of business-related fields like accounting, strategy, variance analysis, um, you know, flux analysis, auditing. So you're going to take courses to help train you in not only what you're doing, but to make you a well-rounded finance professional. You're going to get exposure to the senior leaders within finance and within Pitney Bowes. And one of them is going to be assigned to be your mentor throughout the program. And then you're going to have networking opportunities. So you'll meet people and leaders within finance, within the business unit, within other functions that are adjacent to finance. And all of this is in an effort to, to train you and groom you to be a modern finance leader within Pitney Bowes. You can go to the next slide. So I talked a little bit about the program here. Um, where are these rotations going to be? What, are the, what is the exposure you're going to get? So it's across our business units, global e-commerce, pre-sort, Centec, and then a, a corporate function within Treasury. And the discipline is going to be around product management, strategic finance, uh, decision support. So effectively planning and analysis to help your operating team, help your business unit leadership make informed decisions. Controllership, which is an accounting type role. So you're going to get exposure to how does a company actually close the books? How do they, what are all the activities that need to occur to capture a period's worth of transactions, of sales, of expenses, of, um, of divestitures, potential acquisitions, any transaction that occurs in that period of time, how is that recorded into a simple financial statement and how do you interpret that? And then treasury and capital markets. There is a lot of cash that moves around across several different legal entities. We need to pay our vendors for supplies, we need to pay our employees, we need to receive funds from our clients. So there's a cash cycle that you're gonna to get to understand. And what I'll say about the, the location down on the lower right, um, I mean, the environment we're in, the situation is constantly evolving. So we've got a dense population in Stanford and Shelton, Connecticut, and in Austin, Texas. However, you know, given the environment now and when the environment is when we launch this program, clearly we're going to be flexible and, and go with uh, state and federal regulations on whether working remotely is more um, is safer um, and more practical or in person. Now, I would say going through a program similar to this when I started my career and going, you know, joining any company from undergrad, you want to be in person. You want to see people. You want to be around people. It's going to be the best thing for your growth and development. Next slide. Who are we looking for here? So candidly speaking, we're looking for people that aren't afraid to take risks. We're looking for someone who's not afraid to be thrown into the deep end and thrive there. Someone who's not afraid to be taken out of their comfort zone constantly. So imagine it this way, you're gonna join, you're gonna be in a rotation for six months. Now, some of this may be brand new, from your, your undergrad degree. It may take you six months to actually learn what you're doing to make a solid contribution. We're gonna rip you right out of there and put you into something brand new as soon as you get comfortable. And in doing so, you're going to start gaining the ability to learn things quickly, understand how to prioritize, figuring out what the high weight attributes are in any function or any business unit that you're, you're supporting. And then the qualifications, these are, you know, 
relatively standard. Um, you know, we're looking with with individuals with you know strong pedigrees, academic excellence, you know, proven academic excellence, um, and great uh, you know extracurricular activities as well. So given we've only got 45 minutes, I'm going to pause here. And um, I, I think either in this deck or another one, we've got a lot more background um, information around HR and benefit packages, et cetera. But I'm going to pause here and see if we've got questions on Pitney Bowes, on the program, on anything else. Um, I just have a question. Um, and. Um... If you want, you know, the benefits and all of that, you can send to us and we can share with the students so that we get some more time to ask you the questions while we have you. Um, if you are in the offices again, this is going to kick off June, July, I think, right? Of June or July. If you are in the offices again, is there um, uh, some uh, accommodation if a student needs to go to Austin for six months? As far as housing is concerned and things like that. Sure. So it's exciting. Um, That's a great city. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So you know we're fleshing out the details. This is the first launch of this program, and if there is a need that you know if we have a rotation that's based out of Austin, more than likely it'll be some travel reimbursement. It'll be relocation assistance, okay. and depending on the market, depending on um, the inflation at that point, there may be some assistance as well for housing. But it'll primarily be based on the relocation, right, and moving expenses. Of course, yes. Um, uh, one of the things you didn't mention, um, how important is it, since you are looking for graduating seniors, that they will have done an internship or had some significant work experience, part-time or summer, et cetera? Yeah, look, the way I'll, the way I'll answer that is this is a training program. We're looking for students to come in, you know, with a fresh and open mind and be trained in how to be a finance leader, not only at Pitney Bowes, but in general, be a modern finance leader, but experience will matter. You know, this is a, this is a premier program. We're looking for folks that want to get on the fast track an accelerated pathway into leadership here. So experience will help. Great. Thanks, Judy. Any of the students that have joined us in chat or on video, would you like to ask a question? You were very thorough, Vin. <laughs> you might have answered all their questions. <laughs> the, rec the interviewing process, um, Nicole or Eileen or anybody want to talk about what that's going to look like? Sure. So um, as Nicole had stated, I will be the point of contact. Um, I will put, I don't know, did Nicole share the link? I'll share it in chat as well, uh, the link where students can apply. Um, and basically, um, I would be the first point of contact. I would do the initial pre-screen and then uh, would go over to Vin for review. And then Vin and I are going to discuss, you know, Who's going to be on the panel? Because as Vin had stated, this is a brand new um, rotation for us, so we're very excited about it. And this is um, the link and everything. It's also posted on the Handshake um, yes. app. I know that you use that pretty pretty yes. frequently. Yes, and we have sent them the link to apply for the job and um, all the information in there. So. Um, is there anything that you look for in a resume? I mean, Vin mentioned certain you know, um, characteristics as far as the resume. Do you want a cover letter with it? Anything else you want to mention? Vin, do you want to yeah. take that as far as what you look for in a resume? Or Yeah, I, I don't think, I, I don't know what our standards are these days, Eileen, but I don't, I'm not sure a cover letter is necessary. No, I don't think so either. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a competitive program, right? And we are looking for the best and brightest to put into this leadership program on the track, on the leadership track. So while I'm not going to give, you know, academic qualifications or minimum requirements there, just know that we are, you know, when, when you're looking at a group of candidates or applicants, 
sometimes you're going to go quantitative, right? Without having the context of what their qualitative backgrounds are, their experiences, um, anything that you can't glean from a 45 minute interview, you're going to look at their quantitative accomplishments, your GPA. And that's really what sets you apart. So that's, that's just a starting point, right? That's just a starting point, but obviously, you know, we're going to go through a thorough interview process to get to know each candidate better, to understand what your goals are, what your experiences have been, um, and how you'll best contribute, not only to this program, but to, to Pitney Bowes. Sounds good. Okay, we have a few more minutes. If you have another slide or something that you wanted, completely up to you and students, please ask questions, put them in chat, whatever you want. Whatever works best for you. Do you have another UConn alum with you? Is that Lauren? Yes. Okay. Did, um, and she works in finance. Lauren, you work in finance as well? I work in accounting, actually. So I'm the director of technical accounting. So I work on new accounting standards, special projects, mergers, acquisitions. Um, and I think Vin said you're going to oversee this program. I am. I'm very excited about it. So okay. um, I came out of Yukon School of Business as well um, back when Vin did. Um, and I've been with Pitney Bowes for a little over five years now. So I echo what um, Eileen and Nicole and Vin um, said. It's a great, great place to work, great people, great opportunities to move around um, as we highlighted through some of the different pillars of the business. And this program is a, a great place to start because you get the opportunity to see four different um, parts of the business in, in a quick two years. So it sets you up for a nice position to have been through a lot of um, segments of the business and, you know, hopefully land um, a, a great job thereafter. Yeah, it's quite an investment on the company's part, you know, for a two year rotation program with all the different learning pieces, et cetera. Um, you know, there's not a lot of companies that do that these days. So Kudos to you to invest in, in, you know, young professionals in finance like that. Sounds very exciting. A lot of work. Okay. we got a quiet group today. <laughs> Judy, I know that you share this externally um, for other students that might want to check out the recording. So I would encourage them to go to the handshake platform as well to imply. And if there are any questions, um, after, you know, this session, absolutely, um, reach out to myself, Eileen directly. Um, we can act, I, I mean, that could be it. Maybe you're shy. It's going to be on YouTube. You could be like a viral sensation. If you'd ask like the greatest question. In the world. Um, oh, it looks like there is a question, is a question in the chat. I'll be happy to read. Saif, do you want to ask your own question there? Saif? Yes. No. I'll, uh, okay. Are there any uh, opportunities for juniors as well? Also, in terms of the interview process, would you guys prefer students having some background knowledge in what you will provide through the program? So something about juniors. I'm sorry, my screen is doing funny things. Um, what about juniors? And um, would you pr prefer students having some background knowledge in what you will provide through the program? So I think that's in the job description, but if you want to answer the questions about juniors. So I don't, I can take that. This is not a program for juniors. We're looking for full time employees to be invested in the program. So even graduating seniors that are looking to go into another program afterwards, we would highly recommend that this is for seniors that are completely invested in the program. Um, and uh, so, although we, we love that juniors are interested and excited, and we hope to be doing this as well into the future, um, I would recommend only seniors, graduating seniors apply for the position. So Nicole, also, if it's juniors, are, uh, do you have any summer internships for juniors? So the summer internships have not yet been posted, but I, uh, that same career site where the link is for the financial rotational program um, would be, you know, a search of keyword intern, um, all the internship positions, which are primarily virtual would be posted there. I would say 
keep looking in the next few weeks um, for ones, especially in finance to pop up. Okay, perfect. And um, students, Pitney Bowes had, has posted their career page, a link and a link to health and wellness benefits. So thank you, Eileen, for doing that. And um, Saif couldn't talk because he's in a noisy place. So I didn't see his message, but now I do. So thank you, Saif. We appreciate the questions. Okay. Is anyone on the call today a senior? Uh, oh, yes. yes, I know that right. Alba is, and I can't see the rest all together. But Alba's a senior. Alba, and I think Dan Daniel raised his hand, right, Daniel? No? Okay. So a Alba? Lot of them, again, they're going to watch it on YouTube. But I know okay. I, I saw Alba last week myself, and, and she was free at this time, so I appreciate her joining. And Alba's okay. got some financial background as well and as a senior. So Perfect. Uh, any questions on your end? I want to ask, I know you guys said being that this is a program, it's more so like a full time position. What does the schedule look like for it then like on a day to day basis? Yeah, so it's a, uh, you know, it's difficult to tell you what the day to day is. We don't know what rotation you're going to go into. Um, but I would, I would expect um, full days, you know, eight plus hour days, because you're not only going to be responsible for deliverables within that specific job and those job responsibilities, supporting whichever function or business unit you are, there's going to be, you know, incremental training outside of that, right? To help make you more well-rounded, to help you gain an understanding of, you know, fundamentals important to picking those finance. Um, in addition to leadership competencies. So this is going to be an intense program. Thank you. Sure. I think most programs like this, Alba, are give or take 40, you should expect 40 hours a week, sometimes plus. Um, but, you know, again, it is um, a training program. So it's working and uh, gaining additional knowledge, but working it's correct yeah. is the best knowledge of all. So nothing like being in a company as opposed to learning about companies. So all good. As been pointed out, it's a fast track to a leadership role, which is, you know, it's not common. So I, I would strongly encourage you to take advantage of it, Alba. <laughs> Okay. And after the couple of years, if somebody is successful, what is the level typically that they could achieve after two years? Yeah, good question. So we have the CFO staff, um, the CFO of all Pity Bows, her staff, we get together every month to talk about talent across the organization and identify where we want folks to move, where their next rotation is going to be, if you will right, from a full-time basis outside the program. Um, the candidates in this program are going to be at the top of the list, and they're going to be discussed every meeting on where we want to insert them. And, uh, you know, our measurement of success is going to be upon graduation or approaching graduation, commencement of this program, there's going to be hiring managers fighting over these candidates, fighting over these graduates, right, because they're going to want them to support their teams. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's difficult to say, you know, what level, but I would expect a manager level. Okay, terrific. Wow. Okay, well, if no more questions, um, I want to thank you very, very much. Again, keep in mind, students' schedules are all different. So we have some with us today. Many of the seniors are going to be watching it on YouTube. And your application deadline, I believe, is March sometime. I could have gotten that wrong. Eileen or Nicole, the deadline to apply for the job, I think, is March. Did I get that wrong? No, I think we'll, we'll allow some, right, Ben? I would think we could go later than March for sure because the program won't start until June or July. Yeah, uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, but, again, I would get them in as 
quickly as possible. As early as possible, exactly. Yeah. You know, so we, we may keep the application window open through the end of March, but I would get them in as soon as possible. Yes. Completely. I agree. Okay, wonderful. Well, if no more questions, thank you very, very much for joining us today. And um, I, again, you can watch yourself on YouTube. Uh, we'll have it posted tomorrow. But thank you very much. And we are very excited for our, any of our students to be interviewed and selected for the program. So thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you everyone. everyone.